Adventist Wave Scan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio. Researched and written in Indianapolis and produced in the studios of WRMI Shortwave in Okeechobee, Florida. Our editor is Adrian Peterson. This is edition NWS 459 for release on Sunday, December 10th, 2017. Today on Wavescan, a German radio station in Canada during World War II. We have our ancient DX report for 1913, our Philippine and Japanese DX reports, and our QSO of the week, Australian Media Wave Station, heard in India. During the era of World War II in the middle of last century, the German armed forces in Europe were at a disadvantage regarding weather patterns coming across the Atlantic into the continent. The Allied forces had an advantage in that they could readily obtain current weather information from Canada and the United States, as well as from Greenland and Iceland, thus enabling reliable weather forecasting in England. Here with our story is... Thanks, Jeff. In an attempt to obtain reliable weather information from across the Atlantic, the German authorities developed a plan whereby they also could have access to this needed information. Under the concept of the project Wetter Funkgeratland, or Weather Radio for Land, WSL, they would plant small radio transmitters at suitable locations in North America to defend suitable islands in the North Atlantic. A total of 20 or 30 of these weather reporting portable automatic radio stations were constructed and assembled by the German company Siemens, based upon a design developed by Dr. Ernest Plötzer and Edwin Stober. Each weather radio station contained a weather measuring instruments, a telemetry system, and a 150 watt FK type transmitter manufactured by the Lorentz Radio Company. All of the equipment for each station was stowed into 10 metal cylinders for easy transportation to desired locations. The clandestine weather radio station destined for installation in Canada was identified as WFL 26, which would operate on 3940 kHz, and it was estimated that its almost one ton of batteries would provide power for six months of operation. This automatic radio station was configured to broadcast weather information in telemetry codes for two minutes every three hours. On September the 18th, 1943, German submarine U-537, commanded by Captain Peter Schrue, left Kiel in Germany on its first combat patrol. On board was weather radio station WFL-26, the sixth of 21 that were manufactured. Also on board were two German meteorologists or radiotricians from the Siemens company, Dr. Kurt Sommermeyer and his assistant, Walter Hildebrand. On the voyage across the Atlantic, submarine U-537 was damaged when it struck an iceberg during a mid-autumn storm. Because of the damage, the submarine was no longer able to submerge, and it had lost its anti-aircraft gun. Nevertheless, the submarine continued on its dangerous and lonely journey. On October 22, 1943, the submarine arrived at the coast of northern Labrador, which at the time was part of the separate British territory of Newfoundland. Now, these days, it forms part of the Canadian province of Newfoundland-Labrador. Two days later, the submarine arrived at Martin Bay, right on the northern tip of Labrador, as far away as possible from roving bands of local Inuit hunters. The radio station was assembled and set up on the top of a 170-foot high hill, some 400 yards inland, and at the same time the damaged submarine was repaired. Most of this work was performed during the hours of darkness in the location. Where the radio station WFL-26 was identified with the station logo and the name of a non-existent organization, the Canadian Meteor Service. As a camouflage cover-up, a few empty American cigarette packs and matchbooks were thrown around. In just 28 hours, the project was completed. The radio station was actively functioning, the submarine was repaired, and they began their departure from the North American shores of Labrador. The submarine lay underwater in the Labrador Sea for a while, and they monitored the initial transmissions from WSL-26. To begin with, the station was noted on air with a good signal. 
so the first broadcast was observed to be three minutes late. However, on successive days, the signal began to deteriorate until the station went completely silent just three weeks later. Another monitoring report states that there were jamming transitions on the same shortwave channel, 394 in Canada. However, it suggested that this was not deliberate jamming because the station was still unknown to the Allies. It's probable that the channel was in use at times by other legitimate users who knew nothing about this new clandestine weather station on the north coast of Labrador. On three separate occasions, a submarine U-537 was departing the western areas of the island. from the Royal Canadian Air Force. The submarine successfully reached the shore 